It's showtime. Hello, welcome to you. Did you watch Survivor last night? My name's Jake Scheidel. This is a podcast about reality television and friendship, in which I ask my best friend, Thomas Powell, if he did indeed watch a certain reality show. Hey, Thomas, how's, it, how's life back in Michigan? Well, uh, I think there's really only one way I can describe it, and that is mm. it starts with one thing. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how hard you try. Keep that in mind. I designed this right. <laughs> to explain in due time. Mm-hmm. All right, I can't do any more. No, no, I know, no, I know, I know, I know all of. I actually know all started, of it, but I can't. Do I can't it right do it now. Do the whole thing. Do the whole song right now. Time is a valuable thing. Watch it drop by as the pendulum swings. Watch the clock tick to the end of the day. The clock ticks life away. It's so unreal. Didn't look out below. Watching time go right out the window. <laughs> Didn't even know you wasted it all just to watch you. <laughs> Come so much You know what? But uh, like what happened like what happened in the end? That's my question. Well, it didn't even matter. <sighs> Unfortunate. Um here's a more important question for you. Uh did you watch Survivor last night? I, I am a little bit of loneliness, a little bit of disregard. Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> this has been Tom uh, Sings the Hits, specifically the Mike Shinoda Hits. Oh, my God. 100% I hate, reason to remember the name. I hate that I know who you're talking about. Like, I'm, I hate that I recognize that name immediately anytime it's brought up. I mean, to be fair to Mike Shinoda, uh, he did do the uh, soundtrack for The Raid Redemption, and it's a very good soundtrack. Oh, yeah? yeah? What happens at the end of the game, The Raid Redemption? What, what, do you... what happens at the end of The Raid Redemption? Like, what, what, what conclusion do they come to? Um, this guy and his brother don't die, and they both go back well, to their respective lives. I guess one as a asking... criminal and one as a police officer. What I'm asking is, like, did it even matter? I mean, a lot of people died, but they, they essentially went back to their, their initial roles. I feel like that was the first draft of that song, and then they, they cut it down and made it much better. One thing. There's the two, these two brothers. One is a criminal, <laughs> and one is a police officer. And the police officer's <laughs> unit gets trapped in a building that is run by drug dealers. <laughs> it's a little wordy. It's a little wordy, but, like, it's good. Some good stuff. Lyrically, it's a masterpiece. Uh, this week's episode of Survivor, Game Changers, is called The Tables Have Turned, which I'm honestly surprised they haven't already used. That also, seems like I mean, a very a little, go-to... Like, I think that's almost a little too concise for how utterly chaotic... The, uh, mm-hmm. What happened at the end of this was like I think that's a yeah. little too neat a description. Yeah, the I was looking at the uh, track or like the timer, you know, when you watch an episode on the internet, um, mm-hmm. and they were they were coming into travel council and there was still like half the episode left, and I was like, how? How is that even possible? I'll tell you how. I'll tell you how. But first, let's talk about the other shit that happened in the episode. Um, on the Mana Tribe, Ty thanks his tribe for trusting him. Haley tells Debbie that she's happy to vote out Ty next, and Debbie's like, sounds good, dude. Uh, but then and then Debbie... talking head, Debbie's like, doesn't sound good, dude. Exactly. Uh, she's like, psych. Psych, starring Spencer Breslin, was that his name? Yeah. No, but still. Um, it would have been great if also it had just cut to her in the talking head, and she had her hand behind her back and she took it out and her fingers were crossed. She was like, aww. <laughs> Wink. That would be funny. Debbie, the funniest person on Survivor. That's what everybody says. Uh, she also tells us that she was just telling Haley whatever she wanted to hear. And it's fine. It's a solid uh, play. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Debbie wants to keep old Koo strong and says it's too early to make Ty a target. What she's saying is he's not a member of the band Spoon from Austin, Texas. You know that band Spoon from Austin, Texas? I, I'm familiar with that. Why does... Because uh, they have a song called Don't Make Me a Target. And oh. she's like, 
don't make Ty a target. Okay, I thought maybe you were making some sort of underdog reference because they have a song called The Underdog. Mm, they do have. They have an album called My Mathematical Mind. Or is that a song? It's been a while since I've listened uh, to that it's band. A, it's a it's a song. That's off the album mm. uh, Gimme Fiction. Um, Gimme Fiction, good album. There's also you know. Uh, Telling people what they want to hear, that's just the way we get by when we play Survivor. Mm. No, it's been too long <laughs> since I've listened to that song. Know. That's not how it goes. Also, also uh, when they start to film the show, they're like, mm -hmm. the the, uh, the crew are like, oh, I turned my camera turned on. Turned my camera on, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when uh, when, this, when, a, when a take goes badly, they're just like, gah, 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 gah. It's, another, it's another reference to the band Spoon from Austin, Texas. Yep. It's an album they had. I should re-listen to that band. It's been a while. Yeah, They've got some good. new stuff coming out. Yeah, yeah. I think um, they just had an album come out. Oh, it just came out, or it's about to come out. I think it. I think it came out already. Hmm. Good for them. I'm excited to listen to that in three years and be like, "Why it's, it's going to be? This? It's going to definitely feel like 2005 uh, in mm -hmm. the next month or so." Because Spoon has a new album. Gorillas have a new album coming out. <sighs> so excited for that. Gorillas are great, and I'm very happy that they're back. That was a little song I wrote about gorillas. Um, yeah. All right, let's talk about this reward challenge. Uh, only two people from each tribe do this challenge. The first has to balance on a ball. Nope, they have to balance a ball on some poles. While they going are over a balance beam ground. at a certain point. Yeah, they have to go under some stuff and then go on a balance beam, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the normal obstacles. And then they pass off the ball to the second person who has to unlock a bunch of sandbags and knock down, like, a bunch of idle things from some posts. It's great. Yeah, they, it's so, like, you know, like any, it's like a carnival game. They have to knock down yeah. the things that are stacked up with a thing that they throw at it. Mm-hmm. Nuku has Ozzy and Malcolm run it. Tavu has Ozzy and Troyzan. Mana has Ty and literal professional, former professional quarterback, Brad Culpepper. Brad Culpepper is not a quarterback. He's a defensive what? end. I have been lied to my entire life. I thought Brad okay. Culpepper was a quarterback. Here, here is why this is confusing, potentially. And I, you are not totally... Oh, because his his wife, who played Survivor yes. previously, yeah. is a professional quarterback. No, okay. My mistake. There, I, I, I think they overlapped at one point, but Brad Culpepper played for the Minnesota Vikings. During part mm -hmm. of the time that he played for the Minnesota Vikings, the quarterback for that team was Dante Culpepper. They had the mm -hmm. same last name. And they were brothers, real-life brothers. No. Why did they have the same last name? I, d I don't know, but Dante, D unless it's like a... Like a, uh, I don't know, like a super d diverse or like adopted family thing. Like Dante Culpepper is a black man, so. Okay, well, I don't see what race has to do with this. <laughs> Racist. I don't see. I don't see race. I don't I'm see. Like, race. I'm like Stephen Colbert. <laughs> um, so Brad Culpepper, prof former professional defensive end, still very good at throwing things because he played football. Yeah, I mean he's he's he was a professional athlete. Like, you're do you think he stuff. stole? Do you think he stole Dante Culpepper's skills as a as a throw maybe as a throwman? Maybe they're like the same person secretly. Mm, they're like the those characters on Legion. Have you? Yeah, that's actually the exact thing I was going to reference. <laughs> but I've never seen them in yes, the same I place at up. the same time. I just I just caught up with that show a couple days ago. Yeah, but you you are correct. That's why they have the same name, just like Carrie and Carrie and the, the Legion. <laughs> Culpepper and Culpepper. Yeah. Oh, but they spell it together slightly they differently. Together they form Culpepper, Culpepper. <laughs> it makes sense to me. Uh, I want to see Dante Culpepper go against Brad Culpepper in a future season of Survivor. Make it happen, Jeff. I, I just remember it's. I'd be interested to see what kind of shape Dante Culpepper is in right now because I remember towards hey. the, towards the end of his hey. career. Yeah. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Round is a shape. You ever hear that joke? It's a pretty <laughs> good one. <laughs> um, but that might that might actually be the case because he um one of the last years that he played in the NFL he played for the Detroit Lions. Uh, Detroit Lions. This was the this was the season I believe after they. Went zero and sixteen. Their nice, perfect their, season. Their defeated season. Preseason <laughs> pre champs. Um, yes. But uh, 
and he uh, he was not in shape. I can tell you that much. Because yeah. he was like a well, big, hey man. Dante Brown was shape. like a big dude. Like he was when he was in shape, he was like six five, like two thirty probably. Like he's a really fast, yes. athletic dude. Like he was like a precursor to like Cam Newton, basically. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, he gained a little weight towards the end of that career. All right. I bet he can cool. still throw pretty well though. I would think so. It's like riding a bike. Football. Basketball. Much like, much like riding a bike, uh, the only way that you forget how to do it is if your muscles atrophy. Yeah, and that's probably not going to happen, especially in the game of Survivor. In the changed, mm. in the changed game. Of in the Survivor. changed game of Survivor. Now it's now it's they start with one person, and then there are twenty winners. It's completely backwards. <laughs> Sandra just walks on the beach and Jeff is like, who would you like to give a million dollars to? Which 20 people would you like to give a million dollars to? She's like, me. I guess you, Jeffrey. These two guys from this podcast I love. Hmm. That's our podcast. Sandra is a big fan of this podcast. And then... uh, That's a shame because I want her to not be on the show anymore. Rude. Well, anyway. um, So Ozzy wins the first part of the challenge... And passes the ball off to Troyzan, and then JT uh, f- finishes his part. Eventually, Ty, who is very slow, gets to Culpepper. Nuku wins. Troyzan still throwing the sandbags, even though he's the first one to get it. Culpepper comes from behind and takes second place. And Haley says about his throwing, that was like Terminator. It was like, well, the thing is, like, he wasn't hitting him that consistently, and then he, like, just locked in and hit all of them. At the end, yeah. like just every well, single one. He he is a former professional defensive end in the game of football. This is true. I, the one thing so. that I thought was a little weird about this is I, when the, when I saw who they had designated for stuff, just remembering mm-hmm. how Ty was in challenges, I was like, oh yes, he makes perfect sense for the part where you have to balance a thing because he was right. really really good at that in yeah. the last time that he played. Yeah, he's he's very well balanced and patient. I always think of his uh, little water hyacinth. Yeah. Metaphor he made last season. I was like, no, it's... For, for I whatever... know the metaphor wasn't about his balance skills, but yeah. it still fits. No, well, I mean, he had a couple notable challenges that he won just for his ability to to balance. But oh those yeah, all, he, those that were, one yeah. last season when he just had to like stand there for hours on end, and he just was it him and did. Aubrey that were doing that was the down to the two of them. I don't remember. But but anyway. Who's Aubrey? Oh, oh, Aubrey, the person who didn't win that season. Oh, I remember her. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my point was, uh, I expected him to do better, but now that I think about it, those were all stationary challenges, so I, I, he's not as good but, at when it requires him to move the thing that he's balancing. He did, he did do fairly well, though. Did, did he fall at all? Did he drop his ball at all? Yes, he or did. Or was he just very slow? Oh, he, dro- well. he dropped his ball like twice. Well, so did I when I was 12 years old. You... <laughs> this Dude. podcast is canceled. <laughs> I'm really sorry for that joke. Um, uh, over on the Tavua tribe, Ozzy says, they need me around. I feel very confident I've been really good about being the rock of this tribe. Yep, I heard that too. <sighs> Looking out for Ozzy now. Famous last he... words. Mm-hmm. My 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 last words uh, here on this life on this planet will be: I'm very confident I will continue to live. <laughs> I will never die. I'm confident in this. Um, I I do think he has a good point though. I hadn't considered this with him. Um, his fishing ability does make him it's an asset helpful. to them. Yeah, he catches a stingray, and then Andrea says, "Hopefully, this meal." will give us more confidence in the next challenge. What is with Tavu and being confident all of a sudden? They should know well, they're better. also they're also bucking trends, too, because normally this would mean that they would certainly lose the next challenge. Well, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing about being confident this season. This is Survivor Game Changers. So things that would have definitely gotten you out in previous seasons, you know, maybe it'll win you the game this time. Confident, confident, you know? Yeah. Up is down, black is white. Uh, cats and dogs uh, living together. Pandemonium. Yes, it's yep. true. This man has no dick. Yeah, that 
Uh, over on the Nuku tribe, Sandra says, best tribe ever. And then she tells us, the viewer, I'm the queen here. I'm running the show and no one knows it. Yeah, no one knows it. I, I know it. I'm watching the show. I know Everybody it. Everybody on the they, the immediate thing after that is her tribe members being like, yeah, she's already positioned herself as the leader of this. Yeah. Elsewhere, JT says to Malcolm, Sandra's dangerous. And Malcolm says, you? That's not a good Malcolm impression. He's like, you? Oh, you? <laughs> Malcolm, is, Malcolm is goofy. He is a goofy fella. Yeah. He should He should have a movie about him. Called a goofy yeah, movie. I did think it was weird that he kept being like, Max! Max! My son, Max! Max! They took my boy! <laughs> Max! Max! <laughs> and then they Michael Addison came up son. and was like, We're the good guys, Malcolm. <laughs> and, and, and then, uh, and then <laughs> Goofy got blown up on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and then he tried, and then he tried to commit suicide in New York City by running his car into a dumpster. And then he went to the hospital, and Jack Shepard was his doctor. What a crazy life that Malcolm boy lived. And also, there was a part before the boat blew up where I was watching it, and I was like, oh, the twist is that that guy is not actually a doctor. But then he was a doctor, and I just didn't remember it correctly. Yeah. I made yeah, one of our yeah. friends mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so afraid that we're going to devolve into old Lost Party jokes. As I was going to say, as always, this this podcast is secondarily a Lost podcast. Mm-hmm. Where is it? I can't find it. Ugh. I'm, I'm doing real bad with the jokes Jake, tonight. We, we have to go back to talking about Survivor. Good one. Um, where, did, where did we end up? Um, oh, at the Immunity Challenge. Each tribe has a collar, and then everybody else is blindfolded, and they have to find some bags, and then do like a marble labyrinth maze kind of thing, which this, is very this cool. Felt, this felt like in a challenger are you the one uh, challenge. I love are you the one. Let me. Well, let's get through Survivor, and then I got I got some. Oh, are you gonna I talk? To, are you gonna to... tell me about are you the two? <laughs> let, 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 just oh my god! All right, let's get through this episode first. Um... So Jeff says, after describing the challenge, oh, by the way, both losing tribes are going to tribal council. Mm. Uh, what? And then, and then Malcolm is like, what? what? <laughs> Max, did you know about this? Somebody was taking a sip of water and they spit it out. <laughs> Someone was like, well, <laughs> about to do this immunity challenge, I'm just going to take a big sip of coffee. Gotta stay hydrated. I did a literal spit take the other day, but I can't remember why. They did also. They did actually have coffee from this reward challenge. So someone made the coffee, yeah. and they were like, "All right, Jeff's talking. Just to t- now to just take a big sip of coffee." What a calming voice was, Jeff yeah, Probst had. And then he was like, "Oh man, they're they're both you know both losing tribes are going to go to elimination." And they went, <laughs> <laughs> How can that be? One of them slipped on a banana peel. <laughs> Which is like so weird because so much of that set is just sand. Yeah, and you then would Jeff, think that you would be Jeff, able to slip, but Jeff had a flower on his shirt and he sprayed some he sprayed <laughs> seltzer out of it at some point. <laughs> and then like Jeff Farner poked Sandra in the eyes with both of his fingers. Ugh, classic bit. I love this slapstick yeah, comedy well, television then, yeah, program then, survivor. Then Jeff Farner tried to poke somebody else in the eyes and they put their hand up to block it mm-hmm, and then laughed mm-hmm. at him and then he just like hit him on the head yeah classic some classic jokes over here with some classic jokesters love this show they should have the three stooges on this show another one of the contestants was was parachuting uh out of a mm-hmm. plane and jeff switched out their parachute with an anvil so good. And then as they, when they, they were parachuting down normally, and then they looked up and noticed that it was an anvil, mm-hmm. and, and then like, oh, held no. out a sign that said, like, help on it, or something yeah. like that. Oh, you know what scene we didn't talk about yet? Was when they were, like, hiking, and then they walked off of the cliff, and then they looked down, and then they started to fall. Oh, man. I like that was the, a pretty dramatic scene. I like the part where they cut over to the crew, and it was actually, like, the, the camera was actually like a dinosaur that was operating mm-hmm. itself and then hey, turned it's a to, living and then turned into the audience and was like it's a living <laughs> <sighs> great show 
It's just a really good show. It's just a really good show all over. It's just like so good. Love Survivor. <laughs> okay, so this is the challenge. People so are getting yelled at. They're getting yelled they have, at. They get yelled at and try to find some balls, and they, they find the balls, and uh, and Tavua wins. They were correct to be confident. Yeah, Jake, another, another challenge that mirrored your life experience. I'm sorry, what? How your, how exactly did it mirror my uh, it was life your, experience? It was your first sexual experience, or someone was yelling at you to find some balls. <laughs> you know that common experience everyone has. Everybody has it. That very like, relatable experience. I'm about to lose my virginity, and then just somebody is shouting, "Where are my balls? Where's the Where's the balls at?" <laughs> Uh, oh boy rough stuff here on capital earth what I, like okay who wins this <laughs> challenge taboo won the challenge hey Woo-hoo. congrats to that team uh my mom told me that she's catching up with she's following survivor this season um which i've been trying to get her to do uh since we started this podcast and she finally is like watching every week and she called the tribes teams, and I was like, Mom, come on. <laughs> Mom, You've been tribes. watching this show since 2000. That's the that's, tribes. No, that is prime mom behavior, though. <laughs> I know. That is, like, the most mom thing to be like, yeah, and they're teams. I like the green team. They won the challenge. I'm green? Um, so then Jeff tells them that the two tribes who lost are voting out one person this is yeah, this is this went from like because when they showed the preview i was like okay so two, there's gonna be two people eliminated this yeah. is fucking bonkers well i i well, watching this i i had the thought that this season seems like every idea they've ever had well like getting ready for the next season that they've just never really fleshed out has been fleshed out for this season so it's like every week we're gonna have a new twist on the game it does i mean if you're gonna like this is a very good test season because it's a bunch of people that already know how to play the game yes so you just throw a bunch of crazy shit in there and see how they handle it which i think they handled this very well i'm sure we will see this again yeah this was good yeah um but the way they're like placing idols in different ways and the fact that they switched up tribes to eliminations in which i think is the earliest they've ever done it um and then there's like one other thing that seemed like something they, they, they brought back the oh, legacy the, advantage the legacy but, advantage yeah, they changed with it a little bit. slight rules yeah um and i'm sure there will be more that they uh that they throw at us and i'm excited to see that consider me a survivor fan Fans versus favorites. I'm a fan, and my favorite is Jeffrey Probst. And I am a favorite. Because You're... I've been Jeffrey Probst the whole time. What? I Twist. never emailed because I was too busy making m- jokes. Fuck you. <laughs> Mike and I are actually very good friends. All right, let's continue. I'm going we'll to retire from season. Survivor and is going to take Stop. over for me Stop as host. Stop it. <laughs> um, so they're voting on one person. Cool. Uh, over on the Nuku tribe, Malcolm says, if we stay Nuku 6, we're good. It makes sense on paper, but only on paper. Sandra suggests they get rid of Sierra. JT suggests Ty. And then Varner summarizes the entire game of Survivor by saying, Everybody plays on a tribe, but it's an individual game from the start. So with this Jeff tribe, stra- so with this tribe strategy, would you say that they did it all for the new coup? Uh, so JT realizes he <laughs> could switch and vote out Sandra. Neat. Turn on. They were both on heroes versus villains. Sandra played the villain role. JT played the hero role. JT could be switching on his team and be the villain. Of this season, it's crazy how the game changes. Yeah, in this it, season of game changers. I mean, it's fitting that JT would would learn that uh, you know what comes around goes around. Yes, absolutely. When he votes Sandra out, she is going to cry her a river. 
he he be on his suit and tie shit. <laughs> oh god, I forgot about that song. It's a good song. When when they finally get to Ponderosa and like see what they look like, they'll they're gonna be looking in some mirrors. Was that the, what that song was called? JT was like, I want to make love in this club. You know that Justin Timberlake song? Yeah. <laughs> I love that I love that JT saw on Candy Shop when he just like talks about blowjobs a lot. Yeah. No, there I did I do though they're like uh in at tribal when uh <laughs> JT was like, I'm loyal to this tribe. In another one that can take your spot, my love. <laughs> I, unlike these hoes, am loyal. Yep. That's what JT said. Uh, over on the Mana Tribe, Haley considers her options to either vote with her tribe or switch it up. Uh, and Debbie wants to take out Sandra. Sierra suggests Malcolm. And then they realize that Justin Timberlake is the swing vote on that other tribe. He's a real Kevin They're Costner. like, They're like, we gotta, we gotta get JT back in our tribe continuing and bring the sexy our, back. Continuing our streak of every single season of Survivor making a reference to the film Swing Boat. Oh, God. Here's, here's, here's how forgettable the movie Swing Boat is. I forgot that we have done that. Or rather, that you have done that. I also forgot that Kevin Costner was in that movie. Was Abigail Breslin in that movie? I think she was. Kevin Costner was the the, the Swing Boat, the titular yeah. Swing Boat. Yes. And, uh... He was like, like Kelsey uh, Donald was Trump that, or Hillary Clinton. Wasn't who like, am I going to vote for? Wasn't like yeah, Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer. Grammer was probably the guy who he was voting for versus... I don't know, Paul Rudd or somebody. Nope, that's a Parks from Recreation. Bobby Newport. Thing. <laughs> Bobby Newport. Uh, so then uh, Ty goes looking for an idol, and he finds an idol, and then he tells his tribe. Cool. That's good. He's uh, He tells his tribe, he tells everybody in his tribe, except, it seems, for Haley. So he's like, if any of one of us four feel that we're going to be the ones voted out, I'll play it for us. But Haley not around for that conversation. She's too busy bringing sexy back. That doesn't really make sense. She's not the JT. She's in this... not JT. She's the JT of this tribe. I, that's a stretch, but sure. I'll allow it. She's she's going to say bye, bye, bye no, she's to the, somebody else in the she's, game. She's the Britney of that tribe, which is why nice. there was a point where she <laughs> the camera she... <laughs> and she was like, it's Britney, bitch. <laughs> because when she got to the beach, she was wearing all denim, and so was JT. Mm-hmm. They were like, we're, we're denim boys. They didn't say that. That wasn't a thing that they said. I'm sorry, I made that Okay, joke. so anyway, what happened with this tribal council? <laughs> oh, what? We're not even to the tribal council yet. <laughs> Some wildlife shots. I found... I- I got the thing back. Did you do? Did you do a different wildlife audio sample yeah, this time? I did. I did. I did. I switched it up. Hey man, it's Survivor Game Changers. Everything's let me, changing. Let me hear that. Let me hear that again. Yeah, you want to hear it one more time? All right, let's play this one more time. All right. <laughs> it was just there. Oh, you did, you did me doing the Borat thing. Yeah. <laughs> Why live? Why live? <laughs> uh, we, we saw the heron. We saw the manta ray. Got some fish. Always with the fish, you know? When I saw those fish, I was like, very nice. How much? <laughs> how much for that fish in the ocean? Then we saw a cuttlefish, which did you know? Not technically a fish. I almost said not technically a cuttlefish. It is technically I mean, a cuttlefish. Te- they are technically, technically, technically a cuttlefish. cuttlefish. They're technically mollusks. Also, they don't hug people. Yeah, fucking rude. I, I, I like a fish. I like my fish like I like my people. Uh, huggers. I like my fish like I like my wrestlers. The Bailey, Yeah, the Bailey fish. I love Bailey fish. Uh, they're called the chameleons of the sea because they can change color. Is that neat? They're also considered the most intelligent invertebrates. I think that's pretty neat. Smarties. Yeah, smart that's smart cool. guys. Uh, they have one of the largest brain-to-body ratios in all invertebrates. Is that cool? Do you think bunch that's of, a cool bunch thing? Of, bunch of Taj Maoris. Yeah, right? There. 
Uh, they communicate visually. Um, their ink is used in various pasta dishes around the world. Uh, there's a city in Portugal called Setubal, uh, where cuttlefish is served in deep fried, uh, deep fried strips. I don't, I don't like the idea of eating them if they're that intelligent. I, I don't know what you would eat off of. I guess their their limbs. I don't body. know. I mean, I don't it, know. They're a mollusk. I mean, like escargot's a thing, and people True. people eat people eat you know squid and octopus. Yeah, it's so weird. I think eating. I'm also like I actually think octopus is kind of good. I'm also kind of against it because oct- octopi are actually pretty smart as well. Yeah, and I think generally like you shouldn't eat meat at all. <laughs> Right, I mean, sure, but I'm I'm gonna. Yeah, I know. That's kind of how I feel too. Um, I have no qualms about eating most fish because most fish are the dumbest things on earth. Yeah, um, but I, I, yeah, I don't I don't give a fuck about fish. You, put that on the record. I don't give a fuck about fish. Um, Jake Scheidel says he doesn't care about fish. Uh, now, now my wording, excuse me, that advertisement against me was wrong. I didn't say I didn't care about fish. I said I didn't give a fuck about fish. All right? Get Jake, it right. Scheidel, Jake Scheidel says that he, not only does he not care about fish, he doesn't give a fuck about fish. I don't give a fuck about fish. <laughs> can, you can tell my mom. Ch- Jake Scheidel, elected president. Hooray! It's been my plan all along. Started this podcast two years ago so that I could be elected president. For my lack of care it's for a long, fish. It's a, it's a long con. You still have to wait another ten years before you can run. <laughs> That's true. Nine years now. When's the next election that I could run for? 2034 or something crazy like that? I don't know. It would be, it would be another twelve years. Twelve years. What year is it now? Twenty. 20- 19, 28, 2017, right? Yikes. How did you, do, did you think it was 2019? I don't know what year it is anymore. <laughs> Time is a little remember, easier, my friend. Who can remember these things? It's, it's, okay, Hotshot, you're so smart. You tell me what year it is. Yeah, fucking mollusk man. I think you're so smart. Yeah, what mollusk, are you, a cuttlefish? Mollusk, what do you expect mollusk, me to know this? What do you think I have cuttlefish? Cuttlefish don't even have, wear watches. So, fuck you and fuck your cuttlefish. Don't you dare talk about cuttlefish that way. Yeah. All right, let's get into this fucking crazy tribal council. Tribal let's council. Go. Uh, Culpepper calls this tribal council a Mexican standoff, and Sandra says all are going. And Sandra says all our guns are pointing at them. What? Uh, um. Mm-hmm. Where where are they again for this? The season. Yeah. Are they in Fiji again? Yeah. Oh, like and guess a, what? More like a Fiji standoff. I'm going <laughs> to cut that joke out. That was the worst thing hey. you could have... Hey, guys. I mean, I don't know. I think it's a bit of a misnomer to call it a Mexican standoff, because it's more like a Fiji standoff. It's not even... It's not... <laughs> like the... Okay. Um... Culpepper says there are more threats on their side. Melton, Sandra, and Sandra says, oh, I'm not going home. I know that. Notice she doesn't say she's confident she's not going home. She just says, I'm not going home. Important distinction. Uh, and then they I discuss... mean, that's, that's, the, that's the kind of move from a seasoned player. Mm-hmm. A two-time player. Two seasons. Also a two-time winner. Two-time winner. Good for her. Uh, they discuss Haley's role in the vote, and Sierra says, Sounds like they don't want you. You know where you stand with us. And then Michaela, fucking all-star of every season, says, Yeah, on the outside, right where they put you. I love Michaela. She's my favorite person. Michaela's great. Yeah, it's all... <laughs> Imagine what would have happened if... It... Oh, wait, you did pick her, didn't you? Oh, wait, no, you didn't. You picked someone else who's not on the show. You know what? The word is coming up soon, and at that point, I'm picking all of them. <laughs> New rule, I get it's all the points and you get none an of them. It's an unprecedented strategy. I, <laughs> I've never even considered it. There's nothing, well, you know a, there's nothing in the rule book that says a dog can't play football. Exactly. Nothing in the rule book that says a dog can't play Survivor either. 
Oh my god, I would root for that dog so hard. Dog, How can anyone oh vote that dog out? Oh my out? god. Okay, so th- we I brought this up on Twitter a few weeks ago, and we forgot to talk about it. Do you remember my idea for? <laughs> Sorry, it just it's gonna take me a minute to compose myself to talk about this because I'm so excited for it. Mm-hmm. But my dog bachelor show. Yes. Where there is a character like the bachelor or bachelorette or Tila Tequila, who is the one whose affection is vied for. But they get to pick from a bunch of dogs instead of a bunch of people. So, yeah, it's a it's a potential owner, and they just yeah. a bunch of dogs. And not not even a potential owner, a future owner. You know what? I'll be the first. I'll be the first dogchler. It's going to have a different name than dogchler. The that's bachelor. The barchler. Mm, that's still a little rough. Uh, a little a, a little rough. Like a dog rough. No, I don't get like it. a dog. Uh, sometimes dogs go rough, rough. Anyway, yes, this is a good this is a good idea, and uh, it should be, Jeffrey it should happen. Probes, make it happen. You hey, know, people. You're not doing anything. How about you produce this? He's uh, he's probably busy uh, making a shit podcast. That's probably what he's doing. <laughs> you can tell him I said that. I don't give a fuck about fish. I don't give a fuck about that man's podcast because it's this is bad. clearly a mi- a microaggression. <laughs> I feel like yeah, that's You're probably going to go to. Anyway, so here's the thing. Email us, did you watch last night at gmail.com. Give us your names, some good names for the dog slur. Good boys. How about good boys? Some good, good boys. Is that a good name? I mean, there's going to be some good girls on there, though. Uh, excuse me. Oh, yeah, I forgot. All dogs are boys. And all <laughs> all cats dogs are boys, boys yes. <laughs> I saw cats and dogs in 2000. I'm pretty sure I learned the lesson. We we already established last episode that that's not the that movie doesn't even endorse that view. Mm, I, uh, here's here's the thing though. Uh, I saw it when I was nine years old, maybe ten years <laughs> old. I don't remember exactly when that movie came out, but I'm pretty sure that that was the lesson. Here's the thing. Here's here's what we're doing. This summer, when uh, oh, wait, survivors. Wait. Jay, what? also, would there be a catchler? Like you know, like how there's the, catchler. That's a ca- that's a better or, or a catchlerette. I guess is what it would be. Yeah, yeah, catchlerette. That's good. That's really good. Um, it can be on Animal Planet. You just have every you alternate seasons like Bachelor Bachelorette, where one season is dogs, right. one season is cats. Wait, but here's the thing: the Bachelorette always comes from the previous season of the yeah, Bachelor. Yeah, we're, not, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Ooh, what about the dog slur, for lack of a better term at the moment, has a cat that he wants to get rid of and replace it with a dog, and then that cat, no? Okay, no, no, no because mm. that was just one cat. You, you, you can't do a right. show based okay, off I of fucked that. it up. I fucked it up. Okay. One of the dogs who gets eliminated in, like, the final four or whatever has a previous owner who's like, what? I don't want no. you. Ugh. How are we going to make this work? We just don't need that mechanic. <sighs> All right. Well, you know, fucking, we're we'll figure it out. Animal Planet, kid, on us. Here's the thing, though. This is a really good idea for a show. <laughs> it's a very good idea for a show. I'm honestly surprised it, that no one has done this yet. I <laughs> know. <laughs> it seems like it would be like a a mad TV sketch or something, but like it needs to be a real show. I it, will produce it. It should be a show. I will produce it and also host it and also be the first dog slur. Um, where are we at? Sandra thinks Haley wants Culpepper out and then whispers to her tribe. Sarah thinks that they're targeting her. JT, a.k.a. Justin Timberlake, gets up and whispers to Brad, I love you, buddy, but they're voting Sierra out. Then Haley gets up and whispers to Sandra to vote for Brad Culpepper. And then everybody gets out of their seats and breaks into hustles. Huddles to whisper. <laughs> they all start doing the hustle. <laughs> uh, Nuku, Nuku believes that Brad doesn't have an idol. Sarah asks Haley if it's her, and Haley says, I'm trying to change everything. Then everyone sits back down, uh, but their side conversations continue. Then Justin Timberlake tells Brad to vote Sandra. I liked when Haley was like, I'm trying to change everything, and then turned to the camera and was like, game change everything. And then she winked. 
<laughs> Survivor, Game Changers, this season on CBS. Um, JT tells Brad to vote Sandra. Jeff tells them that it's time to vote, and Haley uh, is up first, and Haley says, I didn't consent. It's like, oh, ugh, more of this shit is happening. And then Sandra looks at her and says, it's okay, we can vote. To which Haley says, all right, but you might regret it. And then she gets up to vote. And then Jeff says, all right, it's time to vote. Haley's going now. I like that. It's a, it's a different little thing. Like, that's never been done before. Another game-changing moment in Survivor, Game Changers. Um, Michaela whispers to Sandra, why didn't she just tell us about the idol? And Sandra says, nobody's got an idol over there. Pretty confident about that, Sandra? Did you say you're confident nobody has an idol? Maybe a little too confident. Mm-hmm. Too confident, too school. What? Uh, they don't show... Too confident, he... too furious. Can't wait for that new movie. The Fate of the Confident. This theater's in theaters. Uh, they don't show who he voted too for. Too confident. The Scorch Trials. <laughs> They don't show who he voted for, but Brad says, best player here, you gotta go. Oh, fuck, Sandra, only person to vote to win two times. Could She's probably the best player, right? Then they don't show who Varner voted for either, but he says, if you pull out an idol, I will soil myself. <laughs> so, like, not exactly a Jeff Varner heavy episode, but what we did get from him, top quality, notch. Quality moments with him. Quality moments from Jeffrey Varner. Uh, two very good quotes from him. Then uh, Jeff goes to collect the votes and asks if anybody has an idol. And Ty looks around and Brad says, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, he stands up and gives it to Sierra. And Sierra gets the first six votes. And then the next five votes. And it did not count. None of them counted. The next five go. The next five goats. The next five goats. The next five goats, uh, I'll go to Milcom, and then he's just like, oh, I got so many goats now. But then he also gets the five votes. And then he refuses to kill the goats. Yeah, he's like, me and my five goats are going home to see my boy Max. Uh, as they leave, Sandra whispers to Aubrey. You remember Aubrey? She, uh, she didn't win her season. That's how she's famous. Mmm... She says to Aubrey, I think JT knew about that. I think JT set us up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. What's going to happen next season on Survivor? Who knows? They haven't even started shooting it yet. What's going to happen next week on Survivor? Game changes. Let me tell you. Debbie goes crazy. I'm very excited for this. I am less excited about this. Seems like uh, it's going to be obnoxious. Both how they edit it and just her whole thing. Anyway, you want to get into points? Mm-hmm. I've got eight points now. Andrea survived this episode. Nuku won reward. Tavua won immunity. Malcolm was voted out. That's four points, which is how many points I had total. So now I'm at eight points. You have ten points now. You won two points because Michaela and Ty survived. Everything else you guessed was wrong. How does that feel? For uh, me to so double my points and you hey, only get uh, two points. Here, here's my count of that. Uh, scoreboard? Mm. Scoreboard, like, still very early. Like uh, Scoreboard? If, mm, if a team is winning uh, in, no, okay. in the first uh, quarter Jake, by two quick. points. How many, Jake, how many, how many points do I have? You have, ten, you have ten points? Jake, how many points do you have? Mm. Oh, I have eight points, and we're, like, not even through the first quarter of the game. Okay. So, mm, okay, yeah, Jake, um, we'll see, like, hey, we'll see uh, Jake, how it turns out. How many, how many, how many players do you have remaining? Oh, I have one. Until I have emerge. one player remaining. How many do I have? You have two, so you'll probably win two in this next episode. But also, like, you might not. Like, what if Michaela goes down and then Ty is voted out? Okay, who is your other, who is your other person? My other person, Andrea. Your remaining person is Andrea. Yes. What if Andrea gets eliminated? Andrea will never be eliminated. She's yeah? she's a perfect Survivor player. Yeah, she's okay. won every season of a Survivor that's ever existed, and will continue to win every season of Survivor that's ever existed or will exist. She's going to win Survivor of the Moon. 
So, <laughs> so let's get into predictions this next week. Debbie going crazy. Man, what's going to happen with her? Something crazy, I'll bet. Um, all right, let's go. Let's do reward challenge first. Who's going to win the reward challenge? I'm going to say that the the mana tribe wins this challenge. Um, who's on that one? That's the one I like, right? That's the the Brad Culpepper tribe, is it not? Mm, I don't remember who's on what tribe anymore. <laughs> They're probably going to switch it up anymore or again, <laughs> I should say. Um. What's Michaela's tribe? Nuku? Let's say that. Okay. I might be wrong, but I'm going to say that anyway. Right, uh, immunity. Immunity. You go first. I'm going to say that Nuku wins immunity. Hey, that's what she said last week, too, and you were uh, wrong. Yeah. I'm going to say Mana wins immunity. But who's going to be voted out? Uh, I'm going to say that Debbie is voted out. <sighs> You're going to believe the preview? Rookie sometimes mistake. The pre- sometimes the preview is Rookie right. Rookie mistake. They have to, Jake, they have to sprinkle in ones where the preview is right so that it's not entirely predictable. Mm, I'm going to predict that Ty is out next. You are full of shit. <laughs> you just want that to be true. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to... I'm going to praise the day that Ty is finally voted out. You don't think he's actually going to win, do you? I don't think he's going to win, but I think he's going to make it to the merge. Mm, I think he's going to be voted out next. I also think that the merge will happen, not this coming episode, but the following week. I think they're going to do a really early merge. They're either going to do a really early merge or a really late merge. You know, they say early merge gets the merge. They don't say that. They saw, I, I said it, so... Well, that's a that's a fair point, actually. You did say that, so and I they, guess they do. And, Jake, they has officially been recognized by the AP as a singular as a, a singular pronoun. It can be used that way. So, technically, I'm right. All right, where do you science for your fucking that is shit? Not, that is not science. Everything is science, idiot. It's, gra- it's grammar. <laughs> Grammar's that's, that's, a science. Don't, don't don't look at me. Hey, okay, you wanted you wanted, yeah, you, wanted to, you wanted to talk about. Um, are you well, the two? Let me, let, me, let me ask you first. Did you do you care at all about what happened on the challenge? No. I'll just I'll just tell you. Sylvia and Dario were eliminated. All right. Um, are you the one? Second chances. Fucking phenomenal. You need to start watching this show. I, I forgot I, that it was on. I probably will watch it. Okay, you know, like, how fun Are You the One could be if they, like, used strategy or, like, well, gameplay Jake, at all? The pro- the problem is that it's not fun because they haven't changed the name to Are You the Fun. <laughs> <laughs> good point. That's a very good point. I hadn't thought about that. Anyway, Are You the One, Second Chances. Super good. Also, Derek and Cass. Right? Were they the match? Um, yeah, I think so. Derek still has his Jesus necklace. <laughs> well, of course he's going to take that back. <laughs> Do you think- <laughs> if, I, if I was Shannon, if I was Shannon, I would have been like, "Well, I I don't want this anymore." Yeah, this is a bad time. Um, yeah, that was. Um, I'm just so happy that this show exists. I've been wanting this show to exist since before Are You The One started. So, okay, what's up with the format for this? Do people get eliminated? Yes, they do! Um, do you want me to tell you who got eliminated this first week, or do you think you're going to check it out? Uh, just just tell me who got eliminated. Well, you recall how um, last week Are You The One was more like Are You The Done, because uh, they didn't go through with Derek's uh, strategy fully or early enough so they lost l for derek his his team lost in the in the in the in the tournament l for derek first team out on are you the two derek and Cass. wow derek still catching these l's 
I know. I feel real bad for him. Um, so here's here's the here's the uh, here's how it works. They uh, it's like the challenge or Survivor. You have a challenge. You have a nomination process. You have an elimination. That's that's about it. Um, then they all live in a house in Australia together. Oh, and the host is a dude from Real World, like a hundred years ago. That's kind of neat. How they're like connecting I'm, those. I'm shows. sad that Ryan is not hosting this. Yeah, he's probably busy with like literally everything else. Um, I don't want to tell you how the elimination process works. But it's real good. It's very, it's very good. good. Okay. It's very good. It's all of the good parts of Are You the One and very few of the bad parts. So Yeah, it's good. I'm gonna I'm going to continue watching. Um Alright. Let's get into the end of this. <laughs> Let's get into the not the show not being on anymore. <laughs> Uh, hey, speaking of television programs and people on them, um, let's get Ashley from Bachelor in Paradise on Survivor with the hashtag Ashley from BIP on Survivor. Feel free to tag her in that so she knows what's up. You can follow us on Twitter at DYWSLN. Uh, you can follow me at Tom Not Tom. You can follow me at Jake Scheidel. And you can follow uh, at Year Before. It's good. The, the yeah. show is good. I'm in it. Uh, we another uh, this this Saturday the 2006 episode is going up, which I'm yes. also in, and it's good. Okay, good review. I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna make a YouTube review show of your show. But yeah, it's good. That's gonna be that sounds like, yeah my my show for my channel that has like 12 subscribers. That sounds like a good yeah. use of your time. Yeah, I, it will be. It'll be. Good. More popular oh, sorry. Did than I say twelve? I said twelve million. <laughs> it's the most popular show on earth. <laughs> it's not even twelve million wouldn't even be the most popular show on I'm YouTube. I'm sorry. I did I say twelve million? I meant to say twelve billion. Wow, that's a lot. That's more people than exist. Well, yeah. a lot of them are bots, but oh, fair. Um, we have an email. Did you watch last night at gmail.com. Send us your titles for the dog chiller. We already got the cat chiller. The the bark chiller. The bark chiller. I don't know. It seems a little rough. Rough, rough, rough. I'm a dog. All right. Have a great summer. (laughs) Deuces. Stitch up in that spot, the cotch won't stay. And the nail beds rest in the calico hay. The PG mermaid dressed in macrame is waiting. Road in the fork and a bend in the spoon. The turn cut short out the shadow at noon. Melting like wax. Sat sacks and insufferable bore the sharp shots. <laughs>